Thank you, Dr. All right. So again, my name is Kristen May. I will be facilitating today's meeting. Um, thank you for joining again from Kristen virtually. Today, we're going to be covering our welcome and introduction like we normally do. And then we'll be going through our phase two update. Tom will be giving a general update on our program. And he might be just in time, I hear. So we may be patient or switch around to our items there. And then we will do a overview on aligning the project with available funding. So as you remember, maybe from our meeting in September, we went through our cost saving candidates and we're gonna do the same today, but diving into 28th Street Little Portugal as well as our Santa Clara stations. Um, and then we're gonna finish out with our CWG member report out as well as our next steps. So pretty typical schedule um, and structure for our CWG today. And with that, I do want to go through our roll call. So do we have a bill on the line? No bill. No bill. I do see Chris is in the room. Chris, do you want to introduce yourself? Well, Chris Simmons, <laughs> representing East Village San Jose. Thank you, Chris. Connie, is Connie online? Uh, is Danny online at all? Okay. David, can I introduce yourself? Yeah, David Vieira from Five Wings Portuguese National Church. Thanks, David. Is Katie online? Alma, Elsa. He has an event. Uh, Five. Okay. Thank you, David, for that. Just add one line. <clears throat> All right, Helen. Yeah, Helen Masamori, five months group with Curse. And I'm also representing um, Helen Rock Business Association since Connie's not here. Thank you, Helen. Is Isa online? <laughs> no, Isa, he's six. My name is Stephanie Flores. I'm with Latino Business Foundation representing Jesus Flores and uh, of course the five wounds. Yes, thank you, Stephanie. Is Justin on the line? Or Marissa? Versus in college. Yeah. Oh. She's, she's going to tune in to see if she can. Okay. Uh, Terry, do you want to introduce yourself? Terry Chris from University. Thank you, Terry. And I know that we have a new member for School of Arts and Culture coming on board, Melissa. I'm sure she'll come to our future meetings in the coming months. Your folks on I haven't reached out um, to a specific contact yet. Yeah. Thank you. For our Santa Clara members, I uh, did want to see if there's any folks on the line today. We you know we had some join yesterday's meeting. No, nobody on the line there. All right. <laughs> and with that, I do want to get into our upcoming meetings. So as you know, we've been having a lot of um, updates in our project and atypical, we scheduled CWG meetings as well. And so upcoming, we're looking to schedule a late October, early November CWG meeting pending on some of our board meeting dates. I wanted to make sure we give you a preview of that content and an update on status there. We'll also be having a late November, early December CWG meeting as well um, to follow that board cycle and also provide a update as we end the year in 2024 um, for our senior candidates in the direction of the project there. And then also want to share some of our upcoming events. So tomorrow at 12 p.m. will be the BSC Oversight Committee meeting. And that's where we're going to be sharing the same content that we've shared, that we'll share today. Um, and then also share your feedback that you're providing with as well. And then taking a look at our upcoming meetings, there's a working committee meeting in mid-October, as well as a, another board of directors meeting in early November. And the next oversight committee meeting is slated for the November timeline. And then there will be a few more board of directors workshops and meetings to come. I will be sure to email alerts and remind folks on that. 
So just want to start off today's meeting by providing an overview of what our objectives are for today. So really recouping and sharing some of the information and materials that is going to be presented at tomorrow's oversight meeting. So they are going to be getting an abbreviated version of what's shared today, but we want to make sure that we um, come to you with this information and gather any of your in insights, feedback, reactions that we can then share to them tomorrow. And then really just creating the space for you to provide that feedback on the costuming candidates. And this is nice to the product. I also wanted to share um, just the meeting structure for today. So after every topic, we will be pausing for open discussion, questions, and dialogue. That's going to be the forefront of our conversations here today. What we do have is a special comment card. So for those of you who are in prayer, you can have those in your hand. Those will be supplementary. So if for some reason we don't get to your comments, which we hope we get to everything, or if there are lingering thoughts on this was a big topic, you want to elaborate, you want to deeper, we invite you to fill those out. You're not obligated to because, again, we want that to be mainly focused in the discussion portion, but know that that's a resource there. And then for our online folks, there is a similar comment card. So that will be mirrored. And after I'll share that part of me during each of the sessions. So just want to share that structure with you all. And also want to pause for reflection on thoughts um, on how the September meeting went as well. So happy to hear thoughts from online folks, in-person folks. Just want to make sure we have space to hear your thoughts on the structure. If there's things that you liked, you didn't like, we definitely want to put into consideration. So with that, we'll open up the floor for comments. And be back there. I'm the last meeting. I'm the last meeting. And I can pass you the mic, David, so that online folks can hear you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're starting to lean up from the recap of the last meeting. Oh, I, I yeah, think so that you want to talk about how it went. Wheeling out the tool that we were using to vote. Um, yeah, add, added more confusion. Um, actually, probably more confusion for the in-person folks than for the yeah. remote folks. Um, I think uh, if you didn't, yes, Brent. But this to five voting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. The, whatever it was, uh, it was midnight where I was. Um, but even with that, I would I didn't have any problem with the tool online. I, I had a laptop. But people with phones and such with QR codes, I think, and since I've seen that in previous meetings in person, I think it's difficult um, to use these kind of tools more in person uh, than it is remotely. And I think the BTA needs to test it out on themselves before they roll it out to us if they didn't. Um, <laughs> future reference. Uh, and obviously, I mean, I've, I spoke to Tom, I spoke to Bernice that uh, there just wasn't enough time for discussion. And that was evident with people posting their opinions and questions in the chat. So I'm not gonna beat that horse, it's already dead. Uh, we're just hoping for uh, improvements upon, at least in my opinion, those two aspects of that last meeting. Thanks, David. And we hope that with this new meeting structure, at the beginning, let us know your thoughts on how it goes. We'd love to hear your thoughts maybe next meeting. Um, thank you for that feedback. Appreciate it. Anyone online or even in person? I'm happy to walk over here. Uh, I don't need a mic. Um, do I? I just for the people online. For the people online. Okay. Oh, well, they can't. It's not as easy. Yeah. And if you don't mind announcing who you are, just so our online folks can. Chris Patterson yeah. Simmons, uh, president of East Village, San Jose. And just to cap on what David was saying, too, when we feel that we're doing well on time, yeah, lean, you know, toward the people that wanted to speak more, give them that time, you know. And um, again, it's about time management. Thanks, Chris. What they need to get out. And so that would be a good time to summarize. 
and then go back around. I don't know if David was still there to the end. Oh, good. And so that would have been an opportunity for him to get out what he needed to get out. And that way we feel heard, you know, and not just pacifying us, like say what you want and get it over with type thing. You know, what we need to say is important also. What you all need to say is very important as well. And that's it. Thank you. Peace. Just any online books. I don't see any of those times. All right. Well, thank you for your feedback. Really appreciate that. And we'll take them into consideration and hopefully integrate them as we kind of iterate, especially with our hybrid setting. We want to make sure our format is accessible for both in person and online. So appreciate your patience there. But with that, if you want to transition over to our phase two update, so I'm going to pass it on to Tom. So go ahead. Thanks. And thank you all for being here. I'm going to do this pretty quickly because no, we can you didn't come here today to hear me talk too much, but that's uh, just give a quick update of where we are and more importantly, how the conversation we're having here at the last meeting fits into the larger context of moving our Silicon Valley project forward. Um, we're continuing to work with our federal funders uh, as we prepare to apply for the full funding grant agreement. Made base of business. We actually visited our entire congressional delegation, mostly staff, but about one or two members as well, in late September in Washington, D.C. Met with FTA senior staff and got a very clear, uh, clear idea of what the FTA is expecting. They're expecting us to come in with a balanced budget by early next year. And so that's you know that that's kind of hanging over all these conversations. Um, again, looking at the timeline, we're we're, we're driving towards that. At Gold Star, we want to try to get some a policy decision from the VTA board at the end of this calendar year um, mm -hmm. on what the revised scope of the project would be and which cost savings are acceptable to to them as board members, so that we can put together that balanced budget. The input, the conversations we're having here, have bearing on their decisions, and we're trying to find uh, we're trying to find a program for cost uh, cost. Reductions that does add up to a big enough number to keep to, to keep us viable, um, but does it in a way that has the support of all of you, community members, and longtime stakeholders in this project. Um, taking that schedule, breaking it down even further in terms of board meetings and and uh, community meetings, um, where we're in this cycle of community working groups that you see on the top of the screen here, but that's certainly not the end of it. We'll do another round of these uh, late October, early November. And then another round of these in late November before we try to bring a finished package of cost savings and new scope of the project to the board in December. And finally, just a note about what we're trying to solve for. We were so lucky on August 1st to learn that we got the largest, the, the largest federal commitment to a transit project west of the Hudson River, and it's the $5.1 billion. Otherwise, we asked for $6.2 billion and got 5.1. So it's a uh, the glass half full is uh, what an incredible commitment uh, and what incredible confidence and investment the federal government wants to make in public transportation in Santa Clara County and San Jose. Uh, the glass half empty version is we've still got to figure out this pie piece here, the $700 million. And uh, what I hope you'll hear tonight is some, uh, some changes to our thinking that very much reflect the comments that you gave us at the last community working group really focusing on the tunnel, the non-public spaces, the concrete quantities and design criteria, and less the station architecture as the source of that $700 million. Um, I said, I, I hope you'll be happy to see it, but you'll tell us whether you're happy to see it or not. We'll, we'll keep iterating if, if, if we don't, we're not there yet. Um, final note, this is not about cost savings, but we do have a commitment to our board to continue to uh, bring forward information about the question that we, we believe was settled in 2018 that the single versus the twin board design of the tunnel but you will be hearing that those of you who follow the board's proceedings and our public conversations about bsv2 you'll be hearing us talk about the pros and cons of twin board uh throughout uh, the month of october at upcoming board meetings um I, I don't want this to get confused we don't think this is a cost savings this is a different way of building the tunnel not something that we're currently recommending um I put we added to the presentations. I don't want folks 
we're thinking about how to maintain a uh, project that we can all be proud of, uh, thinking that this is either a silver bullet or something that undermines that process. This is a conversation with our board. It doesn't it doesn't generate a lot of cost savings, and so it's really not part of the solution for the seven hundred million dollars. I'm going to stop there and take any questions you have about process and context before I hand it over to the more technical folks. Yeah, the double door is on the table. The twin door is on the table for Barryessa portal to 28th Street. Yeah, so the the, the twin bore. Take the question, I think the, the twin bore. Mm -hmm. the, the, there, there's an option of looking at building a twin bore for a short session on the uh, between 28th Street and the portal near Barryessa. You're correct. Is a cost and schedule heading measure. Um, that is not the same as building the twin bore all the way through. The entire length of Santa Clara Street. Are there any questions online? Not seeing any hands. All right. Any other questions in the room <clears throat> on this section before we move on? Well, looking forward to hearing your feedback. Thank you for all your sharing with us. I'm going to hand the mic to Greg Tebow, who's going to talk about. Um, options that are still on the table and options we're thinking of taking off the table. Great. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. And, um, yeah, my name is Greg Tebow. I'm here to tell you a little bit about um, the 28th Street station um, configurations that we've put in on. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we heard um, the feedback we got from the board as well as the CWG team um, that we worked with last month. Um, some of the highlights were just to maintain that passenger experience, um, also to, you know, establish and maintain the iconic station architecture, uh, especially related to the downtown station, but also at 28th Street, we've, we've, we've made sure that the, um, the architecture for that particular station is uh, reflective of the community, um, and then also to evaluate some of the sustainability design practices. Um, that was a question that one of the board members came uh, presented. So we do have some of that evaluation criteria. Again, we started to uh, refine our station savings cost measures. Um, so we do have some updated costs and elements. And we continue to work with BART on the overall complexity and requirements of some of the criteria that they have for a lot of the station infrastructure um, elements that surround these buildings. So. You know, I've talked a lot about what happens at the North Bend shaft and what's in our station infrastructure building um, and, and some of the mechanical and electrical equipment um, that's near that. So we've been working with BART on trying to minimize some of those requirements, um, trying to help with space planning, trying to make um, some of those things a little bit, um, a little bit smaller to save us some cost. Um, and so, again, we've, we've, that's what we've been working on. Here's the same evaluation criteria we looked at last time, uh, O&M, um, access and orientation, um, the passenger flow, passenger experience. Um, so all of those things are currently part of the slides that we'll present today. Uh, we did add the sustainability design measure, uh, which supports uh, BTA's sustainability goals. Uh, we are moving forward with a Envision certification program, which is a way to certify the um, uh, sustainability practices of infrastructure jobs. It's similar to LEED. Um, it's called Envision. We're looking to achieve Platinum, which is the highest level of, of the Envision certification program. So just to let everybody know, uh, we are we are implementing sustainability practices in our design. Um, so we talked about the parking conversion. Um, so not moving forward to the parking garage at this time and going with surface level parking at 28th Street specifically. Um, the future um, transit oriented development that will occur to surround that surrounds the station would bring in um, additional parking um, or convert that surface level parking to an integrated parking system with those TOD developments. So as part of our program, we'll have the 1200 spaces um, on day one. A lot of those will be all will all be at surface level, and then as the blocks get built out, um, we'll go ahead and integrate those parking stalls into the blocks. Um, the station layouts again, we, we moved forward with the efficiency and optimization of the structure of the stations. However, we did not move forward with minimizing the circular shafts. I don't know if people remember that, but we talked about 
maybe going with a smaller drum, which would increase the number of escalator switchbacks. We are not moving forward with that. We also talked about um, investigating a rectangular configuration instead of circular. We also declined to move forward with those based on the feedback we got from the C C CWG members and the board. So I just want to tell you what we are doing and then what we decided not to do. So 28th Street, when do you want questions? I'll go through a lot of these, David. Um, if you have some questions now to talk about any of this, we certainly can, but I'll talk about the specifics of the station and then we'll pause and you can give us more feedback. But if there's something you want to add right now, we can certainly address it. Will there not be a dedicated parking garage at 28th Street of the Portuguese? On day one, the plan would not to have a parking garage. Maybe I'll rephrase it. Are you planning on putting those 1,200 spots under or in POD developments and not in a dedicated garage like we have at Berryessa? Mm -hmm. No, Peterson. Jesse can answer that. Sure. sure. So what they're saying is the day one build out of the project facilities will not include the 800 over 100. Yes, thanks. Um, what Greg is mentioning is day one configuration of the project build out will not include the 800 stall parking facility. Well, it's it's technically the roughly it's 1200 total, 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 but yeah. it's at great parking, Eight, 800 in the garage. And garage. Right. Right. So, um, there's an opportunity for once, once TOD is coming along, we'll integrate those 1200 stalls as a part of the TOD infrastructure and facilities. So for instance, you could imagine that the full site um, minus the transit infrastructure locations might have a below grade um, parking level where you would have both transit parking and TOD parking. And so that's what it could look like. It could also look like um, parking structures that get wrapped by TOD, so you don't actually see the parking structure. Um, it could be a standalone parking structure that the future TOD developer um, builds out. So there's various ways to do it. That, that answers it. Okay. Yeah, and uh, as Jesse mentioned, there's a lot of different options, but ultimately we will still always have those 1,200 spaces as part of the future build out of the site. Yes. We, have, we have a question from Chris Patterson. Yeah, Chris Patterson, Simmons, East Village. My question is, when you talked about building out the blocks, mm -hmm. is that going to be after everything's done, then you decide to add that, or is that going to be during the construction part? I'm curious. So the program, our program, does not include these blue future TOD, this the $12.7 million is the actual infrastructure associated with the transit facilities. <laughs> so our program and our project, the $12.7 billion, is to build the tunnel, to build the stations, to build the infrastructure associated with, with those stations. Now, as part of this final build out, Jesse's team will come in as part of ETA real estate and develop these sites. It will be happening in conjunction potentially with the build out of our station. It really depends on the economics uh, of the 2035 through 2040 timeline, you know. Um, so some of these could be done. Um, during the final testing configuration, mm -hmm. but we need all of this parcel to actually build our project. Like that's why VTA acquired this parcel. That's why we had to have this. We have a construction staging area required to build our station, which encompasses all of this area. So we need it to build out our project. And then when we're done, there'll be some remnant parcels that VTA will go ahead and develop. So when you say when you're done, that's still within the construction time. So not done, done, not meaning it's open to the public and you're still doing work after. On day one, all of this will be surface parking lots. It'll be done. Okay. All right. 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 Thank you. Yeah. I understand. Hopefully that makes sense. Unless a developer. Unless a developer makes sense. And, and the way, 
the way our parking lot configuration designs are, are laid out is, is this lot could be kind of closed down and this lot remains open and has different entrances and exits. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of compartmentalized so that they can be built out as we as we move forward and as this these properties become developable. So that won't hinder passengers or anything? It should not, okay. no. I mean, it essentially, you know, just like any other downtown type development, there'll I be see. some construction activities that surround the site. Um, you know, there'll be some things that happen. Right. Uh, but essentially, the station will always be available for use. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you'll be able to access it for, and then the rest of the parking will be available. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you for explaining. Sure. So this is a cost savings measure. We are moving forward with it. Big green check mark if we're, we're moving forward with implementing this. Um, hopefully that made sense. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are not moving forward with a smaller diameter shaft with the oh. with the extra switchback. We heard that affects passenger experience too much. Um, so we decided to, to kind of take that off the table, right? Uh, we also took off a rectangular version of an access point. Um, we talked about this last time and, and we haven't taken this off the table. We we do feel the circular shaft is the most efficient method um, to get down to that tunnel. Um, so again, this is the overall site. Um, we do have the north vent shaft area. There's quite a bit of uh, infrastructure over here associated with our station. The actual station that's below ground will kind of span between these two round structures. Um, this is our primary station with our primary station plaza and then the station infrastructure facility here. This is the general layout of the public space associated with the station. We did keep that round diameter. Um, we have gone with a little bit more of an efficient structure of the roof system. Um, we've tried to move all of those, as much of those station infrastructure facilities to the north vent shaft um, as much as we can. This is an above grade um, configuration here with the station infrastructure building. However, we have been able to widen out this future TOD footprint. So, you know, there was some discussion previously about how much of the of the ground floor could be activated. Well, almost the entire area is really available to be activated, except for this gray area. Um, and again, just to reiterate, we need to have this station infrastructure facility as close to this head house as possible. Um, we got a lot of duct banks and things that connect to it. We have eliminated the majority of the underground configuration here. So I know we were looking at maybe stacking some things and moving some things around. What we were able to do is move most of those facilities to the north vent shaft. And again, we work with BART on consolidating the requirements a bit. So all of the major facilities are here. They're at grade and in a, an above grade structure. Um, we really need to do that to save costs. However, um, we have been able to widen out this future TOD and really make this uh, available. We did save this area here for um, integrating, probably opening day will be a bike station, kind of a bike parking parking room, just like a Berryessa station and some of the other stations, but it could also be a leasable space or maybe a combination of both. Um, so I know we talked about, you know, what we have in there and, and, and how can that could be activated. So this would be an activated space um, to go along with the station. Can I say one thing about this, Greg? Just yes. I, yeah. So, so I, I mean, I really, I think the architects have, have really, really gone um, to great lengths to to get clever with consolidating these spaces. Um, but I also am aware that what's on the screen now was the subject of the board referral, was the subject of some pretty serious community conversation in spring. And, and I guess I just want to maybe frame this slide and say that. We are still asking for your support for this. We're not telling you this is, you know, drop dead. This is how it's got to be. Take it or leave it. We're asking, asking you to consider the way in which we've shrunk the facilities, moved them up to the north vent shaft, and, and really tried to pump up the TOD uh, on the along 28th Street there. Um, but in the discussion, I just, I just want you to understand that this is I want to be as sensitive as possible at that. We are asking for your support. We're not telling you this is the only way to do it. Yeah, I'm just surprised we're the ones fighting for BTA's TOD. Base. <laughs> which which does generate revenue to support transit operations in the county. That's correct. Yes. Um, thanks, Tom. Great point. 
this is this is a group effort. We are trying to work work with everybody on this. Um, and as Tom mentioned, you know, we've really come come to terms with trying to make the most efficient use of land as well as the structure as, as possible here um, as to save the cost. Um, this is the overall configuration of the station. We do have the two entrances, one that faces the front of um, of five lanes of twenty eight. And the other would be out to the to the back area, which would face uh, kind of the center of that TOD uh, development. This is a rendering of what the station could look like. Um, um, we do have uh, some different options that we can work through on this. Um, you know, part of our DRC uh, design review committee. Um, um, steps and more community working group uh, will be to advance this a little bit further there's some more options on material selection and color and things like that that'll all happen during the, the next cwgs and next drcs um so this is the general concept of that station you know in portugal they actually have cheaper ways to do what used to be expensive as well so in, in portugal you might want to take a, a trip or at least google street Google Street, so I can help you with that. There, there are ways to do less expensively things that can be done really expensively, um, and we can talk about that when you get closer to. Yes, absolutely. And we can go look. We can look online or, or whatever to look at some of their stations, sure. and even just some of their streets where the calçada, which is the Portuguese stone, the cobbles that are really pretty. They, they've done them in concrete now, yeah. where you can still do designs and whatnot. Right. Um, but there are ways to, to do something nice on the cheap. Yeah. Good point. The, the whole plaza area, um, you know, this is definitely a, an area of, 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 of um, substance that we can really make part of the, of the station, this plaza, and whether or not, I mean, you see some, some line work here in the back about different concrete configurations and different surface areas and things like that. So those are all things we'll work on uh, with the community group and the uh, design review committee as we, as we progress. Right now, we're just trying to get the main structural components of the station done, and then we can go and do the finishes. As definitely as part of our, our you know, um, well, first bullet here is investigating and utilizing more cost-effective structural materials. I mean, that isn't making it cheap as possible. That's just cost effectiveness. You know, what makes the most sense? What is operationally and maintain and maintainability of a, of a product? You know, that's also in consideration. So we don't necessarily mean we're going with the cheapest items at all. We're just saying what is the most effective? You know, what's the most effective solution? We don't want to have to go out there and maintain it every year. And, uh, you know, that's going to cost us more money, right? Um, this program does does have to operate and maintain and pay for that. So we need to make sure that we're um, we're integrating this thing. So great point, David. If you've got some some suggestions, we're definitely open to, to hear that as we progress with that. So we'll be doing some of that stuff at the end of this year and into the next year. Once okay, and uh, this is the overall build out. Again, this is what these buildings could look like. This is not the exact configuration of each one of these TOD parcels um, or height. This just shows kind of our general station, um, you know, our one acre approximately plaza, um, and then these future TOD um, opportunities that we've got all around the station here. Um, and then our north end shack back in that corner facing one along the building. Yes. Can you, can you tell the CWG members? Hi, everyone, Brent here. Can you tell the CWG, <laughs> can you the working group members the depth of the TOD space there behind the station? Sure. Um, right now, we're looking at about 90 to 100 feet of depth, and I think the width is about 150 feet, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a pretty deep structure. I think originally, previously, we were at about 60 feet. We were able to push that out, um, you know, so we've got quite a bit more space of the future TOD. <laughs> if you want to kind of show that on the screen there with the mouse and you can. But yeah, this depth here is about 90 to 100 feet almost. Has the height changed on that uh, infrastructure building? Uh, right now it's a one, 
um, very tall single story facility. So it would be about 18 feet or so. I'm yeah, um, just wondering if we move the tall stuff over to the vent. We did try to move some of the stuff over there, but it is there is some some um, what's in there, you know, on the traction power. Um, I think most of all stuff is already gone. Yeah. Most of it's over there, but there's still a lot of times you have these racks, you know, the and and then the racks have conduits that go up to the roof and then they come down. So there it is a larger than a single story, like single family home type you structure. Still, you still have a tunnel underneath. That's correct. Yeah. All all the majority of the connection between this shaft, which goes down 60, 80 feet down to the tunnel, has a um, direct connection underneath this paseo, which then ties in all the conduits and wires and communication devices that are, are shown in this uh, station infrastructure building. So there is definitely an underground corridor that goes through here and utilizes that. That's the most effective way to, to connect those two structures. Yeah, and then just to add, Chris was asking me, um, again, the acronym of what TOD is, right? So just that's development around transit, transit-oriented development. That could be homes, commercial, and also leasable retail space or community space. Right. Okay, any other any other questions about the station itself? Um, I do have one more slide. Again, we're still in the cost savings of five to twenty million dollars um, based on the elements we talked about, kind of making the structure most efficient, keeping that, that station infrastructure building you know footprint um, in the configuration it's at now, uh, maximizing the north vent shaft and moving things over there as much as possible. And then, you know, looking at most of the cost effective solutions we can have for materials and things like that. Um, so those are the things that we are, are showing as a cost savings. Um, what I do want to show here is what Tom mentioned. If we go with the board referral um, you know, request, which is to move things below grade, we now have, a, have an additional add. So anything that we would, if we said, no, we absolutely need to move these things below grade, if we don't like this configuration at all, um, we essentially negate all of these savings that we come up with, and that's really not going to be um, uh, beneficial to the program um, and meet that seven hundred dollar short or seven hundred million dollar short that we're, we're moving forward with. So, yes, did you guys hear me better now? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we can pause now for any discussion feedback. Absolutely. So, we can start with Chris and maybe work our way left. Thank you, um, Chris Patterson, Simon East Village. So the question is for the 700 million, mm -hmm. the savings that you're having, does it have to be quick to that or are you still going to need to have that outside money funding? Tom, can you that one? So I think it's all of the above. Um, but just in terms of scale, what's available from the outside, uh, we've identified um, a potential opportunity to get up to $100 million of state funding. But uh, that is probably about as much money as is going to be available from the state of California over the next year or two. And I'm focusing on state because we, we don't want to use any more county sales tax money. In fact, we can't use any more county sales tax money. And when the federal government said we're good for up to 5.1 billion, that is a hard cap. So we can't we can't sort of tap the federal government. We can't tap the city and county here. So we're looking for that state money. 100 billion would be an optimistic number. So it can, that could help with 700, but it's not going to get us all the way there. So to get the 100 million, we could possibly, oh, sorry. So if we get the 100 million, um, the suggestion that we had, the CWG, you could probably do that, um, the underground portion of that. Right now, you don't want to do that because of the cost. Well, I don't want to do because of the cost, but also because we think we can actually achieve a lot of the. Um, there's the cost, there's what works best for BART, and there's the fact that we actually found a way to put most of it up in the North Bend structure. So we, we kind of tried to, rather than turn it into an above below ground argument, we tried to sort of put it out of sight, out of mind, up, up by the freeway. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, just to reiterate, as Tom said, most of these things are up at that North Bend shaft. We still will always need something near the primary head house. We try to minimize it as much as possible. So that's the good thing we have up here. Uh, go ahead, Terry. Terry Christensen. So that's good progress on the infrastructure placement. Could you go back yeah, to that slide and uh, explain 
first of all, I'll apologize. I haven't been here for a few months. Uh, I was out of the country, and unlike David, I wasn't prepared to Zoom at any point. Nor should you be. <laughs> so could you explain how the plaza plan here is different from what we objected to a few months ago? Um, I think the plaza plan that was objectionable before had a large infrastructure facility kind of out in this area. And that is no longer there. So we've been able to consolidate that over to the kind of the adjacent parcel, I'll call it. Um, we've maintained the, the one acre, um, you know, general configuration of the plaza itself. We maintain the two entrances to the station, one facing this uh, this corner and the other one facing towards the middle of the, of the properties. Um, so those are the things we've been able to accomplish. We've not talked about the design of the of the plaza itself at all. Um, that will happen later. We have an opportunity to, to go through that. Um, and you know, we did we did keep the circular um, station, right? So originally we said we'll go with a with a square station that is more a little more cost effective. We heard from you, no, we want to keep it round. We really wanted we wanted that kind of selective alternative. So that's why we kept it this way. So those are the things I think we've tried to address for the, for the most part and, and let us know if we haven't, if there's some other things out there, let's certainly talk about it. Thank you. Any online questions or comments? Any further comments or questions? Eric, one. Okay. Uh, Terry, I was just going to say that in addition, having that additional usable space adjacent to the the, the station in yeah. the station infrastructure facilities, helping to get more eyes on the plaza area, is how we're trying to address that as well. Very good. Um, I think also there was some comments before about you know we had below grade elements in the plaza, then you couldn't have as many plantings and many trees on top of them. So I just wanted to reiterate that that's. You know, when we move everything out of this building, then this really opens up the ability for landscaping and planting in that plaza too. Any questions online? Comments? I'll see you. All right. No more comments or questions in person. All right, we can move along, but I do want to remind folks that if there's any lingering comments or questions, you do have the form here in person, and you can also circle back at the end if there's time. And then Adriana will be submitting the form for our online folks as well. So with that, I'll pass it back to Greg for the next section. Yeah, so the next section is actually a real quick one on Santa Clara. Um, and then we can come back to 28th Street if you guys want to have anything else coming to mind. But let me go through this real quick. Um, some of the folks from Santa Clara, the uh, CWG, uh, might be online. I don't know if they've checked in. Okay, great. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, we talked previously about going with a with a much smaller kind of station entrance building, um, which was a little bit less than than um, what we had before. Uh, we have kind of stopped uh, short of uh, of that full reduction. We want to make this structure definitely prominent, um, and we want to also utilize the orchard pavilion theme that we work so hard with the DRC members on. So, um, you know, I, I do want to reiterate for those who are part of the DRC, we do want to keep that orchard pavilion theme. Um, we just need to make the structure a little bit more efficient. Um, we need to consolidate these columns a little bit and then make the structure a little bit more narrow. That allows for a little bit more work for future um, broke opportunities that the city of Santa Clara has. Um, and so those, the, the proposed square footage is very similar. We will go with a slightly reduced square footage. Um, and then uh, again, we are gonna keep that, that commitment we made for the, um, the orchard pavilion kind of layouts. Um, so we've also made this change to have an opening at both the Champions Way or the Eastern approach and Brokaw. So originally the previous design was to have all of the entrance ways along Brokaw. This will open it up to both Brokaw and, and uh, Champions have a dual entrance point for the set for the patrons here. Uh, we'll still have the same general configuration of a, 
of the um, uh, the entrance way. Uh, this will be, you know, have some room for kiosks and some things like that in this area. Um, so I just want to reiterate that for the folks from Santa Clara. This is an option um, for the roof configuration. It's a little bit different than what we have talked about before. We're going to continue to refine this and work with the entire DRC and CWG membership team um, to make this um, reflective of what was shown in the previous concepts. Again, this is just a, a current snapshot of where we're at, um, which gets us um, similar leaf approach uh, here, uh, kind of that faux wood approach here and some flared columns. We just have to have something that mimicked, um, you know, kind of what we had shown previously, but um, we're going to continue to work with the group on this. And I think these are, this slide might be a little bit different than what was emailed out. So, so this is definitely a little bit more um, where we're leaning um, and not so much as what we had sent out in the emails. Uh, but again, it's subject to change, color, signage, material specifics. Those are all things that will happen in DRC. Same with 28th Street. Materials, color, signage, all of those things we'll work with you guys on as we move forward with the selection process there. Thank you, Chris Simmons here. Um, I see the people, they look like they're walking around in the back. Mm -hmm. Is there a handicap ramp on these? Yeah, yeah, there is. So there's actually a few different scenarios for, for ADA compliance. There's actually an elevator that will get you up a half a flight of stairs to the left here. You can't quite see it. I can bring, bring it up here. Inside of this facility here, there's actually a, a half a floor elevator that can get you up from here to here. And then also there's a way, uh, uh, essentially a, a sloped surface that gets you up here and then you can go in and access uh, right through there. So it's ADA compliant in a couple different ways. And then also moving forward, when you're using acronyms, could you share what those sure. acronyms are, especially like DRC, TOD? Yes. People online may not know what that means. Right, so the American with Disabilities Act, um, ADA compliance, um, that's that will, there's a certain percentage of, uh, of elevation change that we need to make sure, and there's landings and, and um, hand railings, and all of those things will be um, provided. Um, you know, DRC is the Design Review Committee, so um, some of the folks who've been part of that Design Review Committee um, and then obviously the CWG, which is all all of you. What's a SIF, right? An SIF is a station infrastructure facility. So that is what we have um, formerly known as the BOH or the back of house. Uh, um, but it's essentially all the guts of the of the station and our operational requirements. We've got an electrical room in here, mechanical room, fire suppression room, battery rooms, um, you know, offices for bar personnel, things like that that are that are in this area. Janitor closets, things like that. Anybody online have any questions for the Santa Clara layouts? Yes. Uh, Anna Vargas, who is our CWG hey. member. Wrote, uh, thank you for confirming that the orchard pavilion design is still in play, yeah. that a reduction of square footage is the impact. Uh, as a DRC member, I'm looking forward to meeting on this topic to understand the impact to the roof lines. Sure. Yeah, good point. Uh, Anna, we, we definitely will talk about the roof line um, and the overall structure um, for this canopy. Um, again, it is a, a slight adjustment, a slight reduction of the, of the configuration of that square footage. Um, that's what we want to present the next time we talk. Uh, any other questions from anyone on Santa Clara? Okay. Uh, in terms of cost savings, we're trying to, you know, the previous Orchard Pavilion discussions um, got us in the five to ten million dollar ad. We're trying to kind of mitigate that with some of these things um, to bring us down to kind of make us almost almost essentially break even. Uh, that's where we're at on Santa Clara. So these cost savings measures get us down a little bit more. Uh, the DRC, the Design Review Committee, additional costs. We're in the same range, so we're really trying to offset some of those costs that we that we had before. They just happen to happen to be a very similar um, uh, magnitude. Okay, 
Uh, yes, another question. Yeah, the question online is, what are the cost increase for station aesthetics? What specifically are the elements that increase the cost or the dollar values? Yeah, the elements? The elements, I believe. Yeah, so um, when we did the kind of the DRC orchard pavilion concept, um, you know, going with a, a more substantial structure here, um, increase the cost. Uh, we had a rounded configuration. We had a lot of different architectural features associated with the group, which we still want to implement. Um, we just need to make this a little bit smaller and then again, go with a more structurally efficient design. Um, so those are the things that increased the cost when we went with this DRC. Also, the all of the um, aesthetic treatment of the parking garage, the aesthetic treatment of some of the elements um, of the canopy, that goes out to the um, to the uh, station platform. All of those things drove up costs a little bit. And so what we want to do is keep the garage facade for the most part. I don't think there's really any big changes there. Uh, we're going to utilize more efficient materials out there, uh, but we'll still have the lead structure and the garage facade wrap. And I know I don't have a, a picture of that, but you can kind of see it in this uh, built in this uh, picture here to the left. This is kind of an architectural yeah. feature that wraps that parking garage. Um, and so we do want to keep all of that. Um, we do want to keep the overall concept of the leaf uh, motif, as well as the plaza, you know, um, um, orchard-esque uh, approach. So those are all things we want to keep. Um, but I think the overall head house structure itself can get a little bit smaller and we can save the money that we had to increase based on the feedback we got during the design review committee process. Hopefully that makes sense. Any other questions on the Santa Clara station section? Okay. I got yes. Um, the garage is still happening in Santa Clara. We're going to get into the yard, you know, all the yard changes. Yep. Why, uh, when you're talking about that, maybe address why you wouldn't do surface parking in the space that you're not going to be using for the yard versus doing the garage. Good you point, to do David, that. and we are going to look at that. So um, I've got a few other cost savings measures I can talk to, and this is just a picture of the yard. Uh, the parking garage is down here to the right. Um, it's a very kind of a small portion of the yard. This area to the left, as you can see in green and color, that is surface parking we currently have for a park. Um, we may convert some of that to um, passenger flood, uh, passenger parking. Those, that is an option we're looking at. The issue is that if we eliminate that parking garage in its entirety, right now we have tracks that go underneath it. And so if we don't build a foundation for that garage and we start to build the tracks and we start to build the station infrastructure buildings without those footings, then we really do miss the opportunity to be able to do it in the future. Because we'd have to tear all that stuff up, then put foundations in and then replace it. So we, we want to avoid that. So right now we have a four-story parking garage. We're looking at maybe we can go with a three-story parking garage and then have some surface lots over here. Maybe we can go a two-story parking garage and then expand it later. Um, so there's definitely some opportunities that we're looking at here for the garage of Santa Clara, but I think we are going to have to keep the overall footing and the general, at least first few floors of that garage, and we're going to need our 500 stall commitment at Santa Clara. And this is a 44-acre site, but as you can see, it is full of tracks and maintenance facilities and car washes and parking stalls for employees and uh, electrical service, uh, electrical equipment, mechanical equipment, things that power the main line, things that power the yard. There's a lot happening in this in this place. And, and what's the really, blue versus the green? So I'll just talk about my slide real quick. Yeah, so um, we're working with BART right now to potentially um, not build out the entire yard. And so maybe the areas in blue are areas of track work where we've got storage tracks that we just wouldn't build right now. However, it'd be designed to be built out in the future. So we wouldn't change the design of the yard. We'd say, okay, 
this yard will house all the trains BART would ever need for the next 50 years or whatever it is. Um, but we just wouldn't have the capacity to build it now. Um, but it could be built in the future. So that's what we're working with BART right now with. They provide some operational analysis that shows you know, how many cars they need. And this is just one concept. These blue, these blue items are just one concept. And if we've got very if we've got multiple options where we're doing the BART right now, that's why the range of this cost savings is so huge. Um, because a lot of these buildings, a lot of this yard work is very expensive. And depending on what BART can maybe utilize in their in their other facilities, um, that's where we're that's where we're saying, okay, if BART can maintain the trains in Hayward or Concord, some of the other yards. There's a cost associated with them doing it there versus us doing it or versus them doing it here, but we need to actually invest the capital infrastructure to do it here. And we might not have the money, as, as we said, that's that's the funding shortfall that we have. So those are the things we're working with BART on. Um, if we can find the money, great, we can all build it all out and, and things will be perfect. Uh, but again, we're still working on 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 that. And that's why this number range is so big up here. What's the green? The green right now is a, just a parking lot. Um, again, this is employee parking, um, employee parking over here. I think this was one concept where we would maybe try to eliminate that and turn that into, I think this one we would turn into um, um, patron parking because the access to the station is down here to the right. Um, and I think this one we could um, maybe mitigate or, or eliminate some of them. So I think that's what was highlighted as green. Is it big enough for TOD? <laughs> That's the problem. So we 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 kind of we told Bar and what we said is we, we can design this whole yard in the future. And if we start to build things out with TOD, then there's no opportunity to do that in the future, right? So you know that's kind of um, that's where we're at. Um, there's there is not a lot of opportunity, and as we've said before in other meetings, once you start building on top of these tracks. There, or next to them, you get into more design criteria issues. So um, we've maximized the 44 acres very tight um, with all of our facilities. So that's this slide. Anything else at Santa Clara before I go back to some of the other options we're looking at? Or the yard? Okay. So I'll just go real quick. Um, these are some big numbers that we're talking about for reconfiguration of things that are inside the tunnel. So not a lot of these things that affect passenger experience. They don't affect what you can see. This is all things kind of behind the scenes. So the majority of our savings, we're really looking at uh, making um, some changes inside the tunnel um, and some construction methodology. Um, again, we're to keep the stations as uh, passenger friendly as possible. So this is our general list of topics. Um, Tom mentioned before, we're looking at an opportunity to potentially go with a twin bore scenario from the north bed shaft out to the east portal at Berryessa. Um, the single bore scenario would continue all the way from the west portal at Santa Clara, all the way past the 28th Street station and to that north bend shaft. We will design the north end shaft to be able to accommodate either scenario. So, you know, and we talked about us moving a lot of the equipment out to the north end shaft. Whether or not we do a twin bore or a single bore, the north end shaft will essentially be designed the same way to accommodate all the things we've, we've said we're going to move over there. So the 900 foot station will be in the single bore. That's correct. Yeah. So, all, all three underground stations would have the same configuration, center platform. You know, um, mezzanine that will get down to it. Um, the twin bore would start after the station. We would use that north end shaft to extract the single uh, the single bore machine as well as launch the twin bore machine. So we kind of use it for both purposes. So again, we're not moving forward with this right now. We're moving forward with evaluating for cost and schedule savings. Um, as I mentioned before, a lot of the, there's some options to go with the, the two different configurations inside the tunnel. This does not affect rider experience. It does not affect any, any passenger experience. This is essentially how the trackways are supported. We're looking at instead of having a, 
uh, a robust structure here. We, we have more of a precast facility that is almost like an inverted U or a box culvert. Um, that's kind of the probably the most uh, effective solution we're looking at right now. Um, another cost savings measure is trying to utilize the muck or the material that we remove from the tunnel boring operations. Um, there's some opportunity to maybe help facilitate some of the salt pond restoration work that is happening out at Albiso. So we're looking on how to move this material out there, try to save some money that way and try to help facilitate uh, all of the environmental um, uh, mitigation elements that are happening out, out there. So, so question on your previous slide, you looked at fill. Yes. Can you use muck for fill? Yeah, that's definitely part of part of an opportunity is to potentially use muck to fill this area. Um, you do have to work that muck a little bit and treat it. It comes out very flowable. You got to dry it out. And then once you actually, there's a few different ways to do it. One to actually like have it as a base material, we actually build off of it. The other way is just to encapsulate it and just keep it in there, but actually have a structure that kind of that, that facilitates not having it to use it as support. So there's a couple different methods that we're looking at um, from an engineering perspective. I talked about the yard already. Um, again, Bart and our, 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 our partner agency has been very supportive in trying to uh, facilitate some of their criteria and requirements that will hopefully eliminate some of the programmatic space requirements, um, trying to reduce some of the um, um, spaces at each station, um, trying to be more efficient and effective with the layout, as well as getting some variances on, on some of the things that Bart had um, had um, as in their criteria. So we're also looking at you know evaluating uh, purchasing some material on a different method, doing owner furnished supplied materials um, for long lead items, and hopefully that will help save us some money. So there's a pretty big savings here as well. Any discussion on any of those kind of tunnel items? Yes, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. It's Chris here. Um, speak of muck. On mm -hmm. the last meeting, we talked about the tests that are going to be um, on the muck, and we're still waiting for the results. Have they come in yet about how safe the muck is, or you have to do anything different to treat it before you're able to reuse it? Yeah, I think the tests are still pending. Okay. Uh, I haven't heard anything. I don't know if anybody's heard anything recently. Okay. I think Thank we're you. still working on that. Yeah. Any online questions? It looks like you're you've been pushing back on Bart. I mean, Bart has been the 800 pound gorilla that kind of says we want you to build us the premium version of of this system. So it looks like you've reached the point where you're pushing back, and I, I think that's good. I don't know if you've been directed by the board or the oversight board to do so, but thank you. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Bye. So yes, that, that's a correct observation, David. Um, so the issue with BART is twofold. Number one is the is the um, design criteria. They're very onerous, it's much more than any other system that most most have ever worked on. Um, they you know they require huge amounts of back backup house facilities and, and things like that. But there's another aspect that that is you know the way BART understands their operation has changed since we started uh, planning the single bore in, in the 2017-2018 timeframe. So at that time, they thought they were expanding their, their fleet system-wide to a much higher number than they're expanding to now. And, and while we're only responsible to house in our yard the trains that are needed to you know, provide reliable and, and backup service in Santa Clara County, um, they're building a yard in Hayward, and it's suddenly got a lot more capacity than it because they're not, they're not going to Take their fleet all the way to 1300 cars system wide, they're going to take to 1000 cars system wide. So now there's a little bit of flexibility you know, because part of an integrated system, it just creates, it's created some space for us to be able to 
have those conversations and, and we're trying to exploit that right now. And um, yeah, BART has been, a, been a, a, a great partner as part of these cost savings measures too. I will say um, it's not just us pushing them, but they're working with us. They're working with their um, their subject matter experts and their engineering, you know, expertise. And, you know, they're maintaining their existing system right now. So we're actually talking with the people who are doing the maintenance and saying, hey, do you guys really need all these spaces? Can we, can we talk about a different alternative that may make more sense? And so they're really engaged in that activity. We've been really proactive in getting a lot of that uh, communication. So I uh, will say BART has been a, a real productive uh, member of getting some of these high dollar cost savings measures implemented for sure. No, online comments to any further in person comments or questions? And we will move on to our CWG member report out. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we'd love to hear if you've been sharing any updates with your communities and what capacities, and also if there's anything that you've been hearing directly from your communities as well. Um, concerns about the projects, questions, um, and yeah. So I'll open it up for our 28th Street of Portugal CWG member if there's anything to share. Yes. Hello, Masamori. Um, still a lot of the business doesn't know what's going on with BART, um, BTA, BART. Um, we, we're going to have a mixer. Uh, with the Santa Clara Alamo Business Association on October 30th from 6 to 9. And uh, we would like to invite somebody from you guys to share with the community what's going on. Um, they don't like too much talking, so we should probably get like I don't know, 10, 15 minutes uh, to share with the community. <laughs> short, short presentation, because last time... Um, they were mad because they want a mixer to talk to people, to other businesses. And um, so it'd be great to you guys and share what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. I'm sure we can check in with our thriving business program folks and see if there's someone available on the 30th. But thank you for sharing the information. Let, let's get it. We will be there. We'll be there. Can't say who just yet, but we'll be there. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is David again. Um, I'm getting the question as usual, you know, is this thing ever going to happen? Uh, yeah. or when are we going to see things happen? And I said, well, maybe in 2026, you'll see some buildings begin to be demolished. Um, and then some activity on the, the Monarch Trucking San Jose Steel site. That's what I'm saying. Is that good to say? I mean, 2025 looks like it's not going to happen as far as demolition goes. It sounds like that's been pushed out. There will be work happening in 2025. However, it won't be a full building demolition. Uh, we do need to go out there and do some testing um, of the site. There's some archaeological testing. So there's some work that needs to be done before we can actually do that. And that has to be vetted with FTA. So there are certain things that, that are happening behind the scenes, so to speak. Um, so there might not be any heavy construction uh, happening on 28th Street in 2025. Um, but we are pushing to really get that um, site cleared so we can start building this North End facility and the primary head house structure. So um, I don't know what the exact date right now, but 2026 is probably very, very close to what we're going to be looking at. We're trying to advance that as much as possible. Uh, downtown, maybe Eric can talk a little bit more about some of the downtown demolition, some of those things that are, that are being scheduled and some of the activities that would happen um, in that time frame. Uh, as well as in kind of a very similar time frame. Um, we just got these properties, you know, recently. So we literally just turned them over to our contractor, you know, two months ago or whatever. So um, in order for us to plan to get the testing done, get the archaeological impact analysis done, to get it reviewed, and then and then do any mitigations, and then we can actually do the actual construction or demolition and start construction. So it is a process, um, and we it, we are in, in the phases of getting it done. So, and then um, secondly, people are saying that the right of way and even parts of the Monarch trucking site um, they're getting overgrown, yeah. and we really can't even see if there are unhoused folks 
living in there anymore. Um, so I would suggest we take care of that soon, um, especially the vegetation along the property line um, where the buildings on, or the properties on 27th Street. Because um, right now you could hide in there and, and we can't, we can't see them. And that stuff's gonna start drying uh, and, and or breaking off. And they're actually tumbleweeds when they dry, they're tumbleweeds and uh, quite flammable. Thank you for bringing that up again, David. Um, we actually had a meeting today. Um, we're trying to work out with our cost team a quicker solution to get the resources out there we need to, one, cut the weeds, two, pick up the trash, three, paint the graffiti. You've told us those are the three top things that we need to address. So um, as I shared with David, we've also had a truck that was lit on fire down near 24th on the right of way that has finally been towed today it is gone and our crews will be out there tomorrow to pick up the remaining things that are left there so we're trying to move some of these things as fast as we can um one more thing on that is david you've asked for a more you know transparent formal work plan like what will BTA and our contractor to see them out. be doing when, how often will we be back out here? So the team is working on that. Um, we do want to get back to you when we have a little bit more detail so that we're just not telling you something that's not actually going to happen, that we have clear expectations for the community. Like when, when people will be back out to look at the weeds and how often we'll paint the graffiti and actually address the things that are the concerns. And we want to make it simple, like a two-page document, right? Nothing that's long and, and wordy. Um, Chris here. So in saying that, I had a whole different question, but I'm liking what I'm hearing here. So is there a list of the properties that are owned now by VT and Bark that have these overgrown areas that need to be attended to? Because I'm notorious for 311. Um, 311 is... Um, the app that we're able to use to report blight in our community. And so instead of going to the 311, it would be good to know who owns that property and go directly to the source. And um, it's, it's imperative because we're trying to beautify our city, you know, and so that part. And then also taking this um, this information to my, to my group, to my board after the September 18th meeting, a lot of people were saying, we're kind of glad it's taking a long time because we know they're not going to rush because people have a fear of collapses, um, taking shortcuts, um, using cheap materials. And we've seen the disasters in other countries where bridges that have been standing and then all of a sudden they're gone. You know, And so to hear what you're sharing, because David made mention about cost cutting and you're saying you're cutting costs, but not quality. And that's a good thing, and I appreciate that. So I'll be able to share that with the board as well. So thank you for that. Yeah, two things. So I think our work plan that we'll share will be more for CWG members. It will have a bit more details. We will be your 3111, our external affairs team. <laughs> so our station leads, me, our team, will we'll, we'll help with the response there. But we're also going to create a more public document, more like a fact sheet that you all could have, you could share with your communities, something we can also share with our city partners, what will happen on the site when the buildings come down, what is VTA doing kind of in this ramp up period. So that's that's something that you will be able to share with your board, Chris, or with other, other partners or community leaders. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Any online questions or comments? Nope. All right. With that, I do want to transition us over to our Santa Clara CWG member report out. So if there's any folks online that want to chime in on ways that you've been sharing with the community or if there's any community concerns regarding the project, we'd love to hear those. This, did you say Santa Clara? Yes, I did. Well, hey, Kristen, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Very good. I, I want to um, thank uh, VTA and BART for being uh, active participants in our Santa Clara Printed Champions, our 55th year 
in Santa Clara in the village and really connecting. I, I think it was like 200 people um, that you connected with in the village on Saturday, October 5th. So um, a lot of interest of what's going on at the station and um, it was 97 degrees. So I really appreciate, you know, the due diligence of staying to the very end. So I, I believe it was a very successful turnout despite all the, uh, the heat wave. So uh, we really appreciate all the outreach that you do in Santa Clara. And I think it really pays off. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And thank you to you, Anna, for organizing the Creative Champions every year and inviting our project. We always enjoy being there out in the community. So thank you for that. Any other folks online? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. And with that, if you want to transition over to next steps. So as mentioned earlier today, our next meeting series is going to be in that late October, early November timeframe. We're still penciling in when that is going to happen. There will be three separate CWG meetings in that meeting series, and that's going to be a preview again of the board materials that's going to be covered and an update on the, the content that was shared today as well. And then we'll also aim to share a little bit more on construction updates as well in that meeting. And then again, in the late November, early December timeframe, we're going to have another few meetings as well to update you again on the cost saving candidates. And that's going to really be also a preview of the December board meeting as well. So with that, before I adjourn, I do just want to remind folks of our form that we have here in case um, there's any lingering thoughts or comments or questions. We'd love to collect these for the in-person folks. And then Adriana sent out the form as well. And then lastly, tomorrow is so uh, I know I'm sure all of you have been waiting with bated breath for the next be uh, part Silicon Valley Oversight Committee hearing for our board. It's actually been canceled for tomorrow. Uh, there was a problem getting um just there was a problem getting everybody in the room at the same time. So we're looking to reschedule that. I, I don't have a date yet, but we'll make sure that all CWG members know about that as soon as possible. Yes, you, and you I want to first. thank you for that update, Tom. <laughs> and I see that Terry yeah, has a- Just before you can say- <laughs> one yes. Uh, yes, sorry, but since we seem to have time, can I just raise the issue of the non-participation of most of the members of the CWG? Was that talked about during the time that I was away? Is there any plan to engage people? Yes? Yes. So. Thank you for bringing that up again, Terry. Brent here. Um, so that was presented at the last CWG meeting. It was part of the board referral actions uh, that staff um, could be taking to, to re-engage some of those members. So one of the things we're going to start to do is to touch base with some of our members that aren't attending, uh, giving them personal calls, checking in a little bit more directly than we have. We normally do that annually, but we're going to try and do it quarterly. Um, so re-engaging with those folks just on a more intimate level, um, trying to bring them back into the fold so that there's more people sitting with you all, uh, you for are almost always here, right? Um, including Danny, but we want to bring back some of those other voices as well. Um, and then thinking about other ways to re-engage those organizations so that they're thinking about their representation every couple years to maybe give members who have made a commitment for three or four years on the committee a, a time to move on and bring other new people onto the committee. So, you know, you could call that a term limit. You could call that, you know, something more we want to discuss with you all. It doesn't mean that you as Terry couldn't continue and maybe represent another organization if you want, but you know, we do ask a lot of you all. This is a, a big time commitment for those that are working or have businesses, right? So um, you know, serving for maybe a couple of years is something that folks can commit to, but then giving those organizations a chance to refresh. So it, like you said, we're going to be doing this for a while, right? There's There are more years ahead of us. And so that can seem like a big commitment to folks. So we want to have that conversation with you all more. But if you all have ideas too, we are, we're open to other ideas. 
some of us could probably help with outreach to some of the members that haven't quite participated. That would be great too. We could do some things in partnership with you all, right? Um, I'm worried about Danny not being here. I don't yeah. Know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I've like I've offered to David, like, hey, let's have coffee and just chat about things too. You know, so um, that that offers on the table for any of you. Um, I would love to do that with you all or with other members if you think that, that would be helpful as well. Me or someone from, from our team. Thank you. Thank you for that comment and question, Terry. And thank you, Brent. We do have, it seems like an online question or comment. comment. We have Bernice online and that's to share some comments. Yes, Bernice, please share. Yeah, I just wanted to respond to Terry's comments. I think one thing that we're really trying to do is be responsive to the feedback that we've got about sort of the lack of participation <clears throat> and really emphasizing the critical role going forward that the CWG members will have, especially as we start doing our transportation management plans, right? Those are critical plans on like the means and methods of how the project will be delivered. So I think we have an opportunity with some really key activities to really emphasize um, the importance because I think um, from the feedback we've got, like, if our CWG members feel like they're really contributing and helping sort of, um, what do I wanna say, shape um, the project as we move forward and they're seeing evidence of that, that they're more inclined to engage. So we continue to welcome your feedback, but I think, um, and as we get more involved um, on sort of some of the um, aesthetic treatments and collaborate with the DRCs, I think there's some opportunities so that the CWG members will really feel like there's some more new engaging um, activities for them to work on more so than um, seeing PowerPoint presentations. So we really want to try to emphasize that as we try to resurge and get um, more active participation from our members. Yes. Thank you, Bernice, for that comment. One more thing from Brent on his end. Mike over here. <laughs> for those that know me, I like to talk, right? But we also did a tour with several of the CWG members while you were going Terry, and um, I think the feedback was that was effective. So do some more in-person, in the field, a little bit more informal meetings with folks to just so they can see what a 90-foot setback for a trend-oriented development looks like on 28th Street, right? So people, like I know, Helen, you said that was very helpful, right? It's like, oh my, it's bigger than I thought, right? So do some more engagement things like that and we're going to be uh attempting that with all three of the working groups so if you all want to do a tour let our team do let our team know and we can we can come out to the site and meet you all thank you for those comments and questions and i think with that if there's nothing outstanding on the online side and we will adjourn our meeting. But thank you so much for coming out tonight in person as well as online. Um, for those of you that are here, you need to take a chance to already the model for the stations. If you'd like to engage with our engineers and have more discussions go home, we, we have them here um, for you. So. Especially since we finished a few minutes early, wanted to make sure to highlight that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Great thing.